Hey everyone, Peaceman coming at ya. In this short video, as a follow-up to last week's video, I just wanted to put together a few points on why use WebRTC, what are the advantages of that in the context of WebXR and VR render streaming. WebRTC serves as the backbone for this entire project, and so I think it only makes sense to actually explain kind of some of the core key advantages that you get outside of just the fact that the Unity Render Streaming solution happens to use WebRTC. If you do want a little bit more in-depth detail about how WebRTC works, definitely encourage you to check out our previous video on the topic. But in this video, we'll just kind of be going at the high level of what are some of those advantages that you get by leveraging WebRTC. For starters, as is kind of in the name already, if you're leveraging web technologies, and video streaming, you want to be using WebRTC. Because we're using WebXR in the context of the browser, WebRTC is really your only lightweight solution for video streaming in real time if you're talking about video streaming to a browser, which is exactly what we do with using WebXR. So when it comes to that, while yes, you can always build your own custom solutions, they will tend to be pretty heavyweight as opposed to using these lightweight open standards that are built into all of the mainstream web browsers, including the Oculus web browser on the Quest. You could of course build your own video streaming solution and there are plenty of companies that do just that, but when there's kind of an existing solution already out there for video streaming to a browser, it just kind of makes sense to leverage that. But there are plenty of other reasons as well. So because of WebRTC's lightweight and real-time nature, they leverage UDP as a means to transmit that data. This does have some pros and cons to it, but for video streaming and audio streaming, it's honestly perfect because UDP doesn't have that extra overhead that you get with TCP. That means that just packets are instantly sent. If it's not a good packet, it'll just get dropped along the way. And if you're using this in a very kind of localized networking scenario and packets aren't traveling all over the internet, then it's actually pretty much ideal because it's very unlikely for your packets to get dropped from the source all the way to the client. In our case, especially because we will be using WebXR and CloudXR in low latency scenarios, packets are typically unlikely to get dropped. If they get dropped, it's typically not a huge deal in the first place. And so it just naturally makes sense in the context of WebRTC to leverage that UDP technology that's kind of built into the stack. In terms of encoding and decoding, WebRTC is very friendly to that. And as a result, actually, if you're using NVIDIA GPUs for your video streaming, then they actually provide hardware accelerated encoding and decoding, which makes it even faster for lower latency scenarios to really take advantage of that encoding and decoding. Very quickly, what is encoding and decoding? When you're sending a video stream, you don't want to be sending just the raw data files because that can be really big. So you'll typically encode it so that you get a much smaller footprint, send that over the web, and then on the receiving end, you'll go ahead and decode it so that you get back the original video. And so by leveraging a lot of these kind of built-in technologies on GPUs, you can do this really quickly and WebRTC has kind of these built-in standards that enable you to take advantage of all of the acceleration features, especially in NVIDIA GPUs. One other thing to, to keep in mind about WebRTC is that it's pretty flexible. So it's designed primarily as a peer-to-peer -peer solution, but it can also be turned into a client server model where you introduce these ICE servers in the middle that act as intermediaries between the clients. And so in that regard, if you have several different clients, you can hop on to a intermediary turn server, which is a subset of ICE servers, and that will allow you to set up a client server model. If you just want to keep everything localized and just have everything peer to peer, WebRTC also offers that flexibility. And it's really neat in that regard that you can kind of use the same networking stack and set it up in multiple different ways that's extremely flexible. Now, of course, there are some cons to using WebRTC. By using the standard, you can't fully optimize it for various different scenarios. And so in the context of VR, if things can get really out of sync really fast and if there's really high latency at any point, and in our current implementation, 
the packets that are sent for each video stream are sent over different ports. And as a result, if, if you have lower latency, it's perfectly fine and everything will stay in sync. However, if things get really out of sync for whatever reason, sometimes those video streams could get decoupled and it'll typically fix itself really fast because it's UDP and we're not requiring all of this alignment, but that could be potential problems for, for VR. In terms of scale, WebRTC is not specifically designed for that. And oftentimes in cases where you want to support multiple different users, you'll typically want to set up a broadcast server that acts as that intermediary to broadcast out to several different users. However, in the case of VR streaming, that's not really an issue because it's usually one to one or one to two, maybe one to three at most. And so if you're worried about scale, that's not really an issue simply due to the fact that it is typically a low user to server uh, types of scenarios that you're, you're leveraging. At a very high level, that's kind of some of the reasons why you would consider to use WebRTC. I think the biggest one primarily being that it has that real time component to it, thanks to UDP. And of course, being built into web browsers is already a huge plus as is indicated in the name. So hopefully this helps to give a very high level about how this VR WebXR solution leverages WebRTC. In the next video, we'll be taking a look at the client side, specifically the web implementation at a very high level and kind of the design considerations, how it was built. And if you're interested in that, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss when that video gets uploaded. If you do have questions more specifically about WebRTC, also make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's been Fuse Man and I'm